You believe that the Bible is God's Word? Yes, I do. Is it in error anywhere? I don't think so. You don't? No. Do you think that instruction that these are instructions from God that represent morality? I do. Okay. So if your child was unruly, would you take him to the edge of town and stone him to death? Old Testament was a, was a time... No, ma'am. You don't understand the scriptures. Are you are you kidding me? I'm kidding you. All right, listen listen to this. If you're going to come on here and tell me I don't understand the scriptures, I'm going to explain to you. If you're going to bring up Old Testament fundamental ideas that God was using to train up the the early no, experiences in no, the faith, you don't know what you're talking about. You can say all day long that Jesus came out of love but you're ignoring the ideas of original sin. You're ignoring the idea of an unchanging God. You're ignoring the moral code that Jesus himself supposedly said wouldn't change. And you're doing it all so that you can believe what you want to believe, so that you can focus on the positive bits, the turn the other cheek, and not the eye for an eye. You are picking and choosing, and you can make the Bible by picking and choosing verses. Say whatever it is that you believe want to say. I believe the whole context of the Bible from the beginning to the end. You just demonstrated that you don't. Now, you do you like to hear yourself talk. I so do. Nobody can really demonstrate anything to you because you like to argue, as most atheists seem to really like to argue. No. And it, I really hang on, hang on. I will get back to you, and you can talk, I swear. There's one thing you've got to understand. All I'm asking is for you to demonstrate the truth of what you're saying. Not simply assert that it's true. Not claim that I don't understand because God hasn't given me a gift. Demonstrate the truth of what you're saying. Hey, what about slavery? I asked, because on the third night we debated morality, uh, and that was loads of fun. <laughs> and I raised the issue of slavery because anybody who watches the show knows that it's my go-to argument. It's the one that's most obviously immoral and most clearly endorsed. Just yesterday, I, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Wow, need sleeps. Uh, just yesterday, I was at University of Texas lecturing to a class, and after it was over, I've done two debates with a guy by the name of Cliff Connectley at Texas State. And he happened to be at UT Austin preaching, uh, although for some reason he doesn't want to debate me again. Maybe it's because I'm that condescending asshole guy, I don't know. Um, but he was out there, and somebody asked him about slavery, and he lied once again. And I'm not, I'm not very free with accusing people of lying. Uh, but I think that's the only explanation for it after we've had this discussion because when we talk about the, does the Bible endorse slavery, he goes to a passage from Paul where he's talking to his uh, Philemon who would run away slave saying, I want you to go back. And when you go back, tell your master I don't want you to be a slave anymore, that type of thing. And he thinks that this is the Bible saying that slavery is wrong. And he says this while ignoring everything in Exodus 21 that expressly tells you who to enslave, how to enslave them, that there were six shekels, that you have to let Jews go after seven, oh, sorry, Jewish males go after seven years. The women you get to keep. <laughs> have to go after seven years, unless you give them a wife and kids, and then you can trick them into being your slave forever. That it expressly says that these are your property that you can pass down, that you are to buy your slaves from the heathen around you. And somehow or another, none of that matters to Cliff, because Paul wanted his slave friend to not be a slave anymore. This is the way theists will think. There's a tap dance to make the Bible say whatever they need it to say. And when we had this debate at the Church of Christ and I brought up slavery, we went, we went through this again. And I heard several different explanations from several different preachers. One of them said, well, this was the norm at the time. And God was implementing laws about slavery to soften slavery so that we would eventually realize that slavery was wrong and get rid of it. He's God! If he can tell you don't kill people and don't eat shrimp, certainly he can say don't own people as property. How hard was that? What kind of weak ass tiny God do you believe in that he can't tell you to stop owning people? Well, he was actually trying to do the right thing because all these heathen, this was the only way that they could come to the true understanding of God was for the Jews to go over there and enslave them so that they could teach them about Yahweh. Well, once again, he's God. What's he doing picking the Jews 
not giving messages to anybody else anymore. I mean, I know that the Old Testament's a comedy of his failures where everything goes wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong until eventually he's just down to, oh, okay, this, I'm going to take this one little family and I'm going to turn it into my preferred tribe and it's still going to go wrong, by the way. Spoiler alert, everything goes wrong for God all the way through the book. <laughs> and yet somehow he thinks it's a good idea. Hey, these other people here who are not my chosen people, but I'd really like them to believe in me. Why don't we enslave them? And then we can teach them about me. Go on, Moses, go do that. This is the type of tap dancing that you get when you engage in people who cannot acknowledge that the Bible might be endorsing something that's immoral, that they might be believing in something that doesn't have good reason. I came through, when I came through customs, the, uh, the customs agent said, oh, you're going to be giving a talk tomorrow night. I said, yes. And I flew in Saturday. And she said, so you're only here for Sunday, and then you fly home on Monday. And I was like, yes. And th this seemed to baffle her a little bit, so she wanted to repeat it. So you're here for just one day to give a talk. And I said, yes, but depending on the election results on Tuesday, I might be back the following weekend. <laughs> if you can demonstrate that what you say is true, I'm perfectly open. All right, well, let me ask you a question. Do you think that you sin? Do you think that you commit evil, immoral acts? Do I think that I've done things which are wrong? Sure. Okay. And, and what are you going to do about that? I mean, do you have any... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to expect some divine intervention to blanket forgive me from that. Because if I've done wrong to another person, the correct course of action is to apologize and make amends to that person and not blow it all off and hope that some god is going to just forgive me and make it all go away. That sort of mentality allows people to not treat people in a way that is good. If I believe I only have one shot at life and one chance, then I treat people is better. Is that than what you believe? Yes. One shot? Yes. When I'm dead, it's over. Okay, so you're born, you die, you, you're born, you live life, you do crummy things, and then you die. And that's, no, that's no, your that's, life? What I, that's, that's not it. You're born, you live life, you may or may not do crummy things. You may then, not, you know anybody that has not done a crummy thing? No. Okay. But Hello? What I'm, you, you, all right, your phrasing was you're born, you live, you do crummy things, you die. That's your take on what the life well, your No, life is no about. that's your take on Your his take life. on it. I'm saying that you're born, you live, you do some good things, you do some bad things, and you try to make sure that the good things that you do um, outweigh the bad right. things that you do. What do you care and, if you only got one life and no, no God is, is involved? Just so, do whatever you want, right? Because there are six so billion it, other people on this earth who I am accountable for. Too. You think that if, if you don't believe in a God, you should just go ahead and do whatever Where you want? Where do you get a moral compass from if you don't have a God? Why do you think a moral code has to come from a God? And what makes it moral? If God says tomorrow that murder is correct, does that make it correct? God's not going to say that. How do so, you know? How do you know? Because I know the living God. Oh, and you've judged him to be good, right? He's a good God. And you think he's good? I know he's good. Okay. What basis are you using to judge that he's good? 50 years of, you know, half my no, life. No, 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 no. No, 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 I'm not talking about experience. Him, I guarantee that God I know is a good God. And the last 25 years I've lived is a what testament. What basis are you using to say that he's good? He you is have, a supernatural you, God. And I experience him in supernatural ways on a daily basis. Well, um... Uh, I you guess logical, you're going to have you logical guys. Yes, you... we logical guys who aren't going to rely on faith and aren't going to waste any more time on this. When I ask you what basis you have for determining that your God is good, you completely miss the point and just talk about experience. You can't demonstrate anything you're talking about. You don't rely on reason. You're just going to believe things because you want to believe them. And we're out of time. How do we go about teaching someone skepticism? How do we go about teaching them critical thinking? And simply pointing out that they're making a fallacious statement may not actually have any impact. And it especially may not have an impact, you can sort out the, gr the grammar in that sentence, if you actually just name the fallacy. Oh, that's an argument from ignorance. I can't count the number of times that I've come home from the TV show. By the way, I do the Atheist Experience television show. I'm assuming some of you may have seen it. Um, and, and one of the things that's made that show kind of popular is that I am 
woefully under-credentialed and perhaps a little under-educated as well. And so I'm, you know, I come from a Baptist background. I'm kind of plain spoken. I can usually explain things in ways that people can understand. And I've come home from the show on numerous occasions where my wife would just kind of glare at me and say, why did you say argument from ignorance? These people don't know what argument from ignorance means. They don't understand that it's a fallacy. They think you're just calling them stupid. Why not explain what the problem is rather than just giving it a name? And she's right. And I've tried to make steps to kind of correct that. Pointing out that their evidence is suspect in the case of people who have claimed to be healed may also not be enough. Well, how do you know that this person was sick? Was there a clear diagnosis before this? Was there a clear diagnosis after? Were we able to, tra to, to trace this process? Um, how can we confirm the healing? How do you know that the report that you're getting from these sources is you know, true and unbiased? And so one of the things you may have to do is get to the heart of why they believe and then find out whether they really think that this justification that they're using for this claim is a good one by trying to apply it to other claims. You can come up with examples of things that could be justified by those same means. Recently, I did a video on faith, and one of the things that I wanted to point out is, is there anything that you can't justify by appealing to faith? And if that's the case, then isn't faith useless? It's not a pathway to knowledge or truth or understanding. It is, I give up. It is the excuse people give when they don't have a good reason. If you have a good reason, you never make an appeal to faith. We just, we just heard a whole bunch about citizen science do we make appeals to faith when we're doing, you know, astronomy? I don't think so. So why is it that, this, this, that these God beliefs and these superstitious um, spiritual woo beliefs have carved out this special area where it seems to be okay that they can just say, oh, you have to have faith? Are they going to consistently apply that faith to every new situation that comes up? Is the reason that they believe this good enough to believe other things? And Another important thing to remember is that you may not convince them right now. It may take some time. It may take some other people. It may be that you're just not particularly good at communicating with this particular individual. And somebody else may be even better in with this individual, whereas the two of you may have the opposite results with somebody else. There's a personality component to these conversations. There are people who think that I'm an arrogant, condescending asshole. <laughs> And they're not wrong. <laughs> Hi, uh, did you read Matthew 5, 27 and 28? Sure, I've read the whole Bible several times. Okay, do you know what it says there? Is that do the you passage have... about uh, adultery where it doesn't just have to be physical adultery? If you look at another, woman, uh, another man's wife with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart? Exactly. <laughs> Don't you think it's important to have limits on your... Sexual, sexual desires, otherwise everyone would just be raping everyone. Really? You think people would just run around raping people? Well, do you just, do you just rape someone? I haven't or raped anybody in the last uh, 50 some years. Sir. Yeah, I've never, I've never raped anybody, nor have I had the inclination I've to. I've been an atheist for 20 years, so I, it's just amazing. So you know that that's, you do. How, how, you do, do, you, how do you get from, it's probably a good thing if people don't run around raping each other to therefore this statement about lustful thoughts is necessarily morally correct. Please make the connection between those two. How do you get from, we should have some limits to what we can do, to we need to, we need to have thought crime legislation? How, well, do, you, how do you get there? What limits do atheists have? Well, what culture, tell me one culture that doesn't have limits, and it's, I mean, there's all, every culture on the face of the earth has limits. And it's, they're not Christian cultures. Chinese culture has got limits. Japanese, the most secular country in the world is Japan. They have the lowest rape rate. Denmark, but, Sweden, but, they, very unreligious places. Religion, and they don't religion. have any rape problem. We have much more rape in the United States and by than the way, they ever do in Denmark or Sweden. Religion doesn't seem to, to, to be any kind of deterrent to rape. Are you implying that all rapists are non-Christians or non-religious? What about the, the priests who are raping little boys and little girls? I just where, got do you that get, from, where do you get your limits from? I get my limits from a rational consideration of the consequences of my actions. That's how I determine what's moral. I get it from a foundation that says my actions have an effect on those people around me and theirs have an effect on me. And that if we're going to live cooperatively and share space, we have to recognize that impact. And my freedom to swing my arm ends at their nose. And that I have no right to impose my will over somebody else's will in that, in that type of scenario. 
That's where I get them from. It's from an understanding. What's the punishment if I get you them, do that then? I get them You're just going to die. I, Andrew, I get them from an understanding of reality, not an assertion of authority. There were a number of things that really bothered them. Number one, they were ticked off that I kept saying, I don't know. They have this mindset that programmed them as to what to expect in this debate. We're claiming God exists and God did it and this is the answer. And you're here to say that that's false and there's some other answer. And if ever they asked things like, do you have an explanation for consciousness? No. You don't? Well, tell me how this happened. I don't know. I'm not convinced any of us know. You're the one claiming to have an answer. Would you like to provide the evidence and the argument to support your actual answer? And if, you're, if I find it compelling, then I'll agree with you. But my lack of an answer doesn't make your answer correct. This is the mindset of the creationists that go through and try to poke holes in evolution. And even if they poked holes so much that evolution ceased to be a concrete theory, they're not one step closer to proving creationism is true. And man, they got mad. By the third night, I think, uh, Israel, the, the gentleman I was debating, said, well, every time we ask Matt a question, he just says, I don't know, which is a bit of an exaggeration because there were a lot of things that I did provide my answers for. And the main preacher came up to me at one point and said, doesn't it bother you? Doesn't it bother, are you happy going to your grave not knowing the answers to these questions? No, I'm not. None of us are. We are all uncomfortable with this idea of not knowing. And that's why we have science. That's why we go out and try to find what the actual damned answer is. I, it's not that I'm comfortable not knowing, it's that I'm more uncomfortable pretending that I know. Um, on the question of whether or not why I find the, the question of God extraordinary, um, have I found it rare? Yeah, I've found it incredibly rare. I have yet to find a single example that I find reliable that demonstrates that a God actually exists despite continued appeals to people to provide the evidence and many, I was a fundamentalist Christian for 25 years and many, many appeals on my own to God and then to other gods to present themselves or do something of that, that kind. I know that's not what we're talking about, but yes, I do find it an extraordinary claim. It ties in with something that, that John had said about his claim that the natural world plus the supernatural world is always gonna be a better answer. Well, sure, it's magic. Magic solves everything. But until you demonstrate that anything supernatural has ever occurred, you cannot assert that it's a better explanation. In fact, it may detract from you finding an actual explanation, something that John seems to think that atheism is guilty of. His example of junk DNA saying that, oh, we found this junk DNA. Well, guess what, John? It didn't halt science. Science kept going, and science found the flaws in those assumptions. So you're, you're fear-mongering about the end of science as a result of scientists finding junk DNA. Uh, is, is one that I, I just don't understand. But John said a couple of other things. One was that this idea of intelligence and reasoning and, and ability deserves an explanation. That's, those are his words. This is the appeal of religious claims and the appeal of claims about gods. Boy, it's really cool to have certainty. It's really cool to no longer have any questions and not be forced to say, I don't know. Sometimes when you say, I don't know, that's how you get to actually knowing. And those who assert that they know before it's justified are the ones that are halting this progress. Quoting the Bible is not going to get you anywhere because you haven't demonstrated why anybody should consider the Bible to be true or authoritative. I'm asking, why should that carry any weight? What difference does it make what the Bible says? Because it's true. How do you know? How do you know? Because I just do. It's by faith. You, you just, okay. okay. So, how, so you how, do you know the, how do you know the Quran isn't? Is that just by faith too? Because it's not based on a God. It's based on... It's based on man. the same God you worship. No, it's not. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It absolutely yeah, it is. is. If Have you read... The case, then... Do you not know the story of Isaac and Ishmael? You haven't read your Bible, have you? That's the problem. Okay, go well, go well, read it, and you'll story. you'll free yourself. Go read it yeah. and actually study, uh, because those uh, the then, three. Then, how, how do we all happen to to be? We can't just come from nothing. 
Who said we Who did? Who said we did? I came I, from I, my I, parents. I came from my parents. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming well, I'm that you probably did. And the universe. We know how the Earth formed. It's part of where well, we have a really good idea as a uh, part well, of the accretion disk uh, from when the sun was formed. And, and how was the sun born? The sun was formed by gravity acting on particles. You can go, yeah, you can yeah, go study all yeah, this in me. science classrooms. There, there could have just been nothing at all. There, could didn't have, there, there didn't have to be could a there, sun. Get, there didn't have to be an earth. There didn't have to be a moon. Correct. There didn't have to be yeah, stars. Right. Correct. You know, so, so that's just proving my point. No, it's no, not it proving isn't. your point. It's, it's proving it's, your it's ignorance yes, of basic you. science. I think y'all are ignorant because uh, we didn't have Why? To, because we, we understand the science and you don't? I agree with you. We didn't have to be here at all. Yeah. All right, then. I agree. We didn't have to be here. Fortunately, oh. the laws of the universe were such that physics prompted things to happen in such a way that we are the current state of life on this planet. Yeah, but what, what, what's physics? Wow. What is it? Physics? Even wow. Have to be physics. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be any of that. Just Wikipedia. I yeah. mean, it's God. pick up a dictionary. You know, it's stu God, study. Uh, it's oh, God. it's God. Physics is How do God. you know it's God? Yeah. Because. There has to be a greater being than all of us. To Why? Create. Why? So, because there just has to. No. That's, that's not an answer. Because there just has to is not an answer. We are. That is an argument from ignorance. It's really, you're saying, because I can't think. Because You're saying, because I can't think of any that's better the answer. Truth. You're saying, because I how can't think of truth? any better answer. Well, how do you know I, the physics is true? Because it's demonstrable. Yeah. This is going to drop. If I let go of it, I won't because I don't want to break it. It's, it's going to drop at 9.8 meters per second squared. Truth. Shut the hell up. <laughs> we know physics is true because it is. Because it's demonstrable. Because it is investigatable by science. And because the results are consistent. And it can be reproduced by anybody. Our intuitions have trained our brains so that we're really, really good at finding a way to take bad arguments and hide the flaws. And so the past arguments that, if like for, for example, the ontological argument has fallen out of favor. Um, Alvin Plantinga came up with a modologic version of it and, and we've heard uh, some of that tonight as well. Um, but we're good at that. We're good at hiding the flaws. We're good at deceiving ourselves. If you expected uh, one side to show up here and present all kinds of hardcore evidence for the existence of God and the other side to show up with all sorts of evidence that there are no gods, uh, you, you came to the wrong place. In reality, uh, my view of this, and we've heard it phrased as positive and negative atheism, um, is that this is much more like a, a courtroom where there is a burden of proof, there is a base presumption. You've heard the reference to uh, presumptive atheism. And we're, we're here to, to roughly establish guilty or not guilty, not necessarily to demonstrate innocence. Although that's a case that I'm willing to take up off hours, um, the, the case that in fact there are no gods. But when we look at these court cases, for example, how many people in this room believe that extraterrestrials are visiting Earth, abducting our citizens, and taking them away from medical experiments? That's, that's what I thought. Now, why don't you believe this? Do you, are you not aware that you can actually go and interview living, breathing people who will give you their first-hand account? This isn't hearsay. This isn't I saw this. This is what I actually experienced. And if experiential evidence alone, direct experience, was enough to be rationally justified, clearly these people must be. They will tell you their experiences. You can talk to many of them. Different people who have not interacted in any way that we can tell, and their stories will be very similar. So, you know, that we've got the little gray aliens with the big eyes and everything. Then you can talk to groups of people who will claim to have either been abducted or abducted by the same aliens or abducted at the same time, or just have seen UFOs and seen uh, people be abducted, et cetera. What, what do we make of this? Why is it that most people don't believe that? Isn't, I mean, are we not aware that, the, that there's things like the Drake equation that attempt to calculate the probability that life on Earth uh, how, how probable it is that life on Earth is the only life in the universe? And the answer is, oh my gosh, it's so absurd to think and arrogant to think that this is the only place that life formed. So clearly, we have lots of good reasons to potentially think that there are aliens who might be visiting and abducting people. And yet we don't, by and large. Normally, those people uh, often are, are kind of shunned, uh, hopefully not too meanly. Um, <laughs> And so, if you'll forgive me for actually addressing something about Christianity in particular, I'm not doing it to address the religion, but C.S. Lewis uh, has famously said that what you 
think about Jesus is the only thing that really matters. And he presented it in his famous trilemma that the only options are liar, lunatic, and Lord. And I not so humbly submit that C.S. Lewis was arrogant. That there's a fourth option that starts with an L, which is legend, which we heard a little bit about from David Fitzgerald today. Um, and there are possibly many, many more. So when we look at these alien abduction scenarios, are these people delusional? Are they deceived? Are they attempting to deceive us? Are they dead right? Are they dead wrong? How many Ds can we come up with? And the arrogance is assuming that we have the capacity and the knowledge at present to consider all of the options, this, this when you've eliminated everything that's, that's probable, whatever's left, however impossible, it must be the answer, is wrong because you can't achieve that. You can't eliminate that. 